let's look at sort of a general example where we want to determine an amplifier stability based on the loop gain and a feedback transfer function. So for this particular amplifier, we're given the loop gain function with this expression here, and we're asked to determine the stability for two different values of beta. So the first thing we wanna do in this problem is we wanna express our loop gain in terms of the magnitude and the phase. So let's change this to be in our T of F, which is equal to our magnitude angle with our phase. So the magnitude for our numerator is of course just going to be that beta times 100. And in our denominator, we note we have a three pole system uh, with a triple repeated pole. So we have sort of three poles all at the same place. Uh, so in this case, our magnitude is just going to be this term for one pole, and then we're gonna cube that. So for each of those three poles, we're gonna have a one plus F divided by 10 to the fifth quantity squared. And then because we have three of them, we're gonna take that square root and we're gonna cube it. So that is our magnitude, and that's going to be angled with our phase. And so again, we're gonna have the same phase. So instead of writing negative, the quantity of inverse tangent plus inverse tangent plus inverse tangent, I'm just gonna say minus three times this inverse tangent of F divided by 10 to the fifth. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to use our phase information. And so remember, we're saying our system is stable or unstable by determining the value of the magnitude when the phase is equal to negative 180 degrees. So let's figure out the frequency where our phase is equal to 180, negative 180 degrees. So find frequency where our phase is negative 180 degrees. So in order to do that, of course, we can say we have negative three tan, inverse tan of F over 10 to the fifth is equal to negative 180. Dividing the negative three on both sides, we then have inverse tangent of F over 10 to the fifth is equal to 60. So our frequency then at 180 is equal to 10 to the fifth times tangent of 60 degrees, which is gonna give us a value of our 180 degree frequency of approximately 173 kilohertz. And so this process is not quite as straightforward if we have our poles at different uh, locations because in oft oftentimes we are gonna have interactions between these poles uh, so this is sort of the simplest case. Uh, if you have issues while you're working through uh, something that's a little more complicated, feel free to let me know. Okay, so now we have the frequency at which our phase is negative 180. So now what we want to do is we want to find the magnitude at that frequency. So find our magnitude of that loop gain at our frequency 180. And because we have different beta values, we're gonna do this for each of our two beta values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this frequency of 173 kilohertz, we plug it in here. And if you do that, this denominator term with our cubed becomes approximately eight. So let's come down here and let's first look at our case for beta equals 0.2. So for this case, we're gonna have our magnitude at T where our frequency equals 180 is equal to approximately, again, that denominator becomes about eight. And now our beta term is 0.2 and we have 100. And plugging that in, we get 2.5. So because this 2.5 is greater than or equal to one, we know that our system would be unstable for this beta value. So let's then look at our beta of 0.02. So again, we're saying our magnitude at this 180 degree, uh, negative 180 degree frequency. Again, that makes that denominator approximately eight. 
Now we have 0 0.02 for our beta. That 100 is there, that was just part of our loop gain function. And in this case, we have 0.25, which is less than one. So in this case, our system is going to be stable. Uh, so one note here too, uh, it looks like if you use the exact value of our 180 degree frequency, uh, you, you do get that value coming out to eight. So I'm just seeing that in my notes here. Um, so now we've seen sort of a basic example. What we're gonna do in our next few videos is come back to those Bode plots and we're gonna see how we can quantify our stability. And then ultimately what we're gonna look at is how we can improve our stability for a particular system.